play in a band before? My name is Tommy Z. I am a music producer slash composer slash founder of a company called Tommy Z and Co. And my work, most of my work, is creating songs, scores, and sounds for the world's biggest brands. And when I'm not doing that, I'm teaching other talented musicians how to do the same. When we look for people, we're basically looking for three things. The first thing I'm looking for is skill. Okay, this is not like your average skill. This is not like you're just getting started. Obviously, we are working on projects with really fast deadlines. And so we have to have the kind of musicians who can write music very quickly. Whatever kind of music that you do, whether it's songs, scores, whether it's classical, whether it's rock and roll, whether you make beats, it doesn't matter. You have to be very, very, very good at what you do. I know that sounds like uh, some common sense, some really basic knowledge. But I'm just saying this because some people might have the associate association with brands that it's kind of like you, you could throw up any kind of track and that's going to work. But that's not the case. Like brands are not looking for music in, in stock music banks or music libraries. Okay. A lot of this music is made from scratch by the top craftspeople in the world. And so this skill is very important. Now, let me zoom in on that thing called skill because you have to have some specific skills. Obviously, uh, I always talk about having a superpower. So I work with a number of different composers. I have composers whose skill is that they are very proficient at a number of different genres. So if it's a cinematic score that contains orchestral instruments and has a touch of synthesizers, something, you know, Hans Zimmerish. I have those kind of people. I have different kind of folks whose specialty, whose superpower is writing songs. And not just any song, but they know how to write 30 second songs. Okay, songs that have an intro, that have a verse, and that lead to some kind of a climax, AKA chorus. Look at any commercial folks, and you will see a pattern emerging as far as music is concerned. There's always a setup, so we ease you in, okay? We're inviting you to the dance. First five seconds, okay? Normally, it's like what's happening, some kind of an intro, it's intrigue. The point is to pull the viewer and the listener in. Then we establish what I call first gear. So that could be just like the beat kicks in, that could be the first verse. The point is we're off to the races now, okay? But we can't stay there, right? Commercials are like 30 second films. They have to keep your energy from beginning to end. So it's a small film. It's a narrative. So the music has to support that. So from the first verse, we need variety. We go into a bridge quickly or we go into the chorus. And you'll notice that most brand films or commercials have this narrative. And we always end on top. Like we never end. We never end in first gear. Okay. We, we start in first gear, but pretty much 99% of the time we end up with fifth gear by the end of the commercial. That's the narrative. So no matter what you do, whether it is, whether, whether you're making beats, whether you're writing songs, whether you're doing orchestral scores, you have to have an awareness and appreciation and the skill to understand how to pivot, how to build a structure. This is what I call, um, and it's not mine. I think Quincy Jones came up with this. But he said, first you do a sketch with chalk. You have to sketch out the house before you paint it. Secondly, you fill in the watercolors. So for me, once you understand that first five seconds, and of course it depends on the film and the campaign you're working on because each of them is different. You have to sketch out your structure first, the intro, the first gear, the chorus. You know where it's going to happen. You can literally draw it in your DAW. This is what I do. And then you begin working functionally on each of those sections, making sure that it meets the goals of that section. So if I'm working on an intro, you know, the first five seconds has to pull the viewer in, then 
I'm looking for sounds that grab the attention. I'm looking for exotic timbres. I'm looking for exotic vocals. I'm looking for some solitary sound that's going to make people go, wow, that's cool. And I wonder where it's going, right? This is really key. And so if you're thinking about getting into this business, you know, the way I teach my students also about how to build a reel is if you don't grab my attention in the first five seconds, you don't have the next 10 seconds from me. But if you grab the first five seconds of my attention, then you just bought yourself another 10 seconds. But guess what? If in the next 10 seconds, I don't perceive that something is coming, then you're probably going to lose me after the first 15. And so the skill that the best guys in our business have is the ability to continually keep you interested through various devices. It could be buildups, it could be transitions, it could be something that intimates that yes, we are in the verse now, but you can already sense that something is building and we're about to go into section B or section C or a bridge or a pre-chorus or a chorus, right? So writing really impactful, moving, interesting pieces is definitely a prerequisite. That's a skill you need to have. That's the first thing, okay? It doesn't matter what you do because if you look at brand content, you will see every kind of music reflected there. Look at Nike you'll see urban music, beats. You'll see vintage rock and roll. We've worked on Nike commercials where it was like straight up rock and roll, you know, 160 BPM or something like that. So beats, rock and roll, classical, electronic, you will see all of those genres reflected in brands. And why is that? This is because brands are trying to speak to us, the consumers, and what do we listen to? Take a look at your playlist. Take a look at your Spotify. You probably listen to everything. There's very few people who listen to just one genre of music. I'm not even sure that the kids today talk about genres. I'm not sure. Maybe they do. But it seems to me like we live in a world where it's not so much about genres anymore as it is about just grabbing attention with your music, just resonating with your audience. And, and so brands because they want to get into the hearts of minds of people, they're going to use music as a vehicle to penetrate your senses and to break through into your soul. Nothing else is going to do that except for music, not a postcard, not a TV muted. You don't watch Star Wars muted, right? Sound is the thing that travels inside of us and that actually creates movement, literally, and creates emotions and associations and triggers memories. And this is why brands are aware of this. And this is why it's so important. So I talked about skill, above average skill. You need to identify your superpower. You could be somebody who's very good at classical and electronic and even combining both. Fine, that's your superpower. I have composers like this. You could be somebody who specializes in beats, urban, let's say trap, whatever your flavor is, it doesn't matter. You belong in this business also, because like I've said before, there are those kinds of sounds being used by brands, but you have to make sure that your skill is above average. Uh, there's no room for just any kind of beat, just any kind of song, just any kind of composition. Okay. So that's skill. The second thing is setup. So your skill is not much good to me if you're not able to actually bring it to life on your own very quickly. Okay. I say this because I have musicians who've contacted me who are brilliant musicians. And then when I've sent them the opportunity to work on, on some brand campaign, I get an email back saying, well, I actually have to call Jim to record the drums. I'm going to line up the, the, um, I'm going to line up Bob to, to hook up the microphones. And then I'm going to ask Sean to give me some studio time at the end of the week so we can put it all together. Sorry, folks. I got 24 hours sometimes to turn around the track. That's not a rule, but it's also not an exception in our business. Sometimes we literally have to turn a piece of music around in 24 hours. So what good is your above average skill to me if you can't actually create a fully polished 
piece of music, score, song, or sound on your own. It's not much good to me. So that's the second very important thing is that you need a setup. When I talk about a setup, I don't mean a fancy studio. I have folks who have literally produced music, amazing music for big brands on their laptop, on their beat up laptop. Okay. It's just that they know their cube base inside out. They know their plugins inside out. They know their fruity loops inside out. It doesn't matter. Nobody asks you on our end, what kind of gear do you have? We don't care because all we care about is what comes out of the speaker. That's also the only thing you should care about. So it doesn't matter if you have a laptop or a fancy studio or a bedroom studio. The point is, do you know how to use it to express your superpower? That above average skill that we talked about. So we have number one skill. We have a setup. You have to be self-reliant, able to work quickly. Number three is what I call sensibility. And this is a really tricky word. But it's a very important word and you will hear that word sensibility come up not just in our circles where we make music for brands but it comes up in hollywood circles in any creative circle where creators want to work with like-minded people they want to work with people who they share a certain sensibility with so what is this word sensibility sensibility is a word to describe your approach to life, to work, the way you are as a person, the things you read, your promptness, your approach to craft, your way of communicating with others, your interpretation of a film and how you will approach it sonically. Do you see what I'm saying now? It's like a vague word, the sensibility, but it essentially describes your essence, your brand, as a creator, I choose to work with people whose sensibility I am attracted to. In other words, they are folks who will always send me something interesting. They have good taste, good musical taste, good musical skill, obviously. And so I can't wait to hear how they will interpret a 30 second piece of film with their talent and their skill and their sensibility. But also most of the people that I work with are people that I get along with on a personal level, which means they are interesting people. They teach me something about music or something outside of music. And if you think about it, I talked about this in one of my videos. Um, how do you think film directors in Hollywood choose who they're going to work with? It's not going to be based on how fancy your studio is because every Hollywood composer has a fancy studio. Okay. And it's not going to be even about the skill. If you think about it, I mean, Elfman, Danny Elfman, he's a talented cat. Hans Zimmer is a talented cat, right? All these, all these people are talented. So then what is that X factor? And to me, that's that word called sensibility. It's the fact that some film directors would rather sit on Hans Zimmer's couch than on Elfman's couch. They just feel better around that guy. Okay. It's just their relationship is organically working because they are operating on the same frequency. And you know, the diff, the creative business is a difficult business. The, the, the deadlines are really, really tight. There's a lot of pressure. There's a lot of money involved. There's a lot of people looking at the project. And so imagine now if I have to work with somebody who has above average skill, I mean, they're geniuses, they have their own setup. They turn around music really quickly, but now imagine that I'm just not resonating with them personally. They're not understanding my emails. Even when we speak person to person, it's like the conversation is not going smoothly. So you're investing now a lot of energy trying to be understood, right? And the other person is probably trying to understand you. That takes a lot of energy and a lot of time. And we don't have this energy and we don't have this time. And so if you have your superpowers, your skills, you have your own setup and you become the kind of person with the sensibility where you're prompt, you're diligent, you're interesting, you're creating above average work there's a very good chance that music producers like me will want to interact with you. We'll want to spend our time with you. We'll want to invest 
our energy into that relationship. And I think that's the same way it works in Hollywood. I'm pretty sure that's the same way it works with artists who choose who they're going to collaborate with. I'm almost certain that a smart artist is not going to put someone in the room who is not resonating with the rest of the team. I mean, that's just a recipe for, for bad moments in the studio, right? So I mentioned sensibility because I think it's very important. It's important to be nice. It's important to be prompt. It's important to be diligent. And it's important to always, always, always trying to be, get an edge in your craft, trying to become better than you were yesterday.